I'm Mike Sirocco. My friends call me C-Rock. I convert setbacks into rocket fuel. Catch me on this week's episode of the Jesse T Show. I, uh, I'm known as the, the rocket fuel guy. I mean, I turn setbacks into rocket fuel, which I'll get into more in detail how I came up with that later. But, you know, really, I just solved the problem of people getting stuck or set back and slowed down by things that shouldn't be doing that to them. Uh, we're put on this planet to solve problems. We're put on this planet to have a purpose of solving, solving problems and overcoming things and accomplishing and creating things. And there's no problem that can't be solved. So, uh, you know, I really work with people on getting them to understand that proactively, not while they're in a setback. And, uh, you know, that's what I do among other things. I mean, I have five or six businesses as well. So talk a little bit about some of the setbacks that have brought you to, to realign your paradigm and shift that into it's rocket fuel versus setbacks. What are some of the, the bigger, you know, highlights or lowlights like the sports center, not top 10 to, to get you to that point where they're, they're now rocket fuel for you. And this is how you serve your medicine to other people. Yeah. So I came from a broken home. I don't remember my parents together. Um, it was that early on that they split up. And a lot of times when you come from a broken home, you're that one link that keeps them having to communicate with each other when they don't get along. So obviously there's a lot of conflict that comes from that. Um, and so when I was, you know, from one to eight, I was living with my mom going to my dad's every other weekend. I'm sure some of your audience can, can relate to that. They came from a broken home, um, child support, custody battles, all that stuff. When I was eight, my dad remarried and my mom was moving on to her third marriage. And I had decided to move with my dad to try something new rather than um, living with a new man um, <laughs> in my mom's house. So uh, actually we were moving to his house, but anyway, um, I, my, my dad talked me into moving in with him and his new wife um, at dinner one night. My mom was brokenhearted, but she let me go without a fight. And for three years, it was some of the most conflicting like drama. Like my stepmom was so jealous of my mom and all prob like, and took it out on me. Right. And I was dealing with a lot of emotional uh, psychological abuse, verbal abuse, threats uh, to myself, to my mom. And it was a rough environment for me. I know I could have had it worse, but for me, I'm just sharing the story to tell you where I came up with this concept of rocket fuel. So uh, when I became about 11, I decided I had enough. Like I had to get out of this environment. I knew it was not conducive to happiness. And I didn't know what the word conducive was then, but uh, you know what I mean? So um, I told my mom coming home one weekend, uh, we were going over these hills in southeastern Pennsylvania back to my dad's house. And I was nervous and sick to my stomach of having to go back. She said, something's wrong, man. What's going on? And I told her, but I, I didn't tell her before or anybody else before because I was afraid. I was scared that I wouldn't be believed or I would get in trouble with the abuser, right? And it's a thing that people that go through abuse a lot concern themselves with those things. And I just didn't want to be a problem. I didn't want to be, you know, an issue for anybody. So I finally shared it with her and she said, that's not normal. You see, I thought everything was ordinary. I thought everybody came from a broken home and dealt with this stuff, you know, and she said, that's not normal. You don't have to deal with that. You, you know, I'll get you out of there. I'll file court papers, but, but you have to stick to your guns because when you believe in something in life, people are going to try to talk you out of it to match their agenda. Or if you start to do better in life, which you're going to do because you're a leader, you're an inspirer. And this is, she's telling me this at a young age, there's going to be people that are trying to hold you back because they're going to quit on their own dreams. And you need to stick to your guns. So I took that, Jesse, as being stubborn. Like, okay, I got to be stubborn, right? So I made a lot of mistakes with that in my life. Uh, perversely unyielding. If you look up the definition definition of stubborn, there's two words that always like, get me fired up. Perversely unyielding. <laughs> and, you know, stubborn is, is, it has a negative connotation. I use that instead of persistence because it, you know, it doesn't have the lullaby effect that persistence has because we hear it so much and it goes one ear and out the other. So uh, I use stubborn a lot because stubborn is not the wrong thing when it's on the right thing. If you're perversely unyielding towards something you want to accomplish or, you know, get in life, you're going to get it. And so back to the story, she filed papers and I was waiting for days and days and days for my dad to get served. And I came home from school finally one day and he had these papers in his hand. And I'm like, oh, shit, man, I was scared. And uh, he said, what's this? He said, go back, go back to your room. I want to go over something with you. So I went back there, sat for like five minutes, probably, but it felt like forever. And my dad was my hero, by the way. So my dad, he had big forearms and rough hands. He owned his own masonry business and he was a hard worker, man. I got to give it to him. I, mean, I always looked up to him for that. And he always carried a wad of hundred dollar bills in his pocket with a rubber band <laughs> around it. Old school. <laughs> and he always used to flash it around and show us. And, you know, so when, uh, when he came back, 
um, and, and, and confirmed that I wanted to leave. I didn't discuss it. He reminded me my mom was poor, didn't have it that well. She's on her third marriage, all these different things, right? Why do you want to go into that environment? You have everything you need here. But dude, I just couldn't take it anymore because I might have lost, like there was nights, and I, I don't think I shared this before. I'm just thinking about this now. There was nights where I slept with my baseball bat because I was so scared. Yep. And no kid should ever have to deal with that. So uh, when, when, he, when I confirmed that I wanted to leave, he takes that wad $100 bills out. He peeled one off, crumpled it up and threw it at me and said, well, you're going to need this then when you're living on the streets with your mother. Now, whether yeah. he did that out of uh, betray, like felt being betrayed or let down or whatever, because he wasn't seeing the true picture, whatever the reason was, I don't hold it against him. But I do know this. I'm stubborn. And I told, my, you know, in my head, I'm like, I'm not going to need that money. Like, I, I, I'll show you. So for 30 some years, I was driving off of this fuel that was lit, this spark that was lit, wow. using it as fuel and not really understanding it, knowing it. I knew I was doing it, but I didn't really know how to, to, to take advantage of the situation for myself. So two years ago, my stepfather that stepped in at 11 years old, George, the guy, my mom's third marriage that I didn't want to live with at first, not because of who he was necessarily just, I didn't know him. And it was just another guy. Right. So, um, he passed away two years ago and George stepped in to be a father at the most crucial time in my life when I was 11 and, you know, working on becoming a man. And he showed me, he was a great guy. He showed me right from wrong. Good, do good things. Good things happen. Do bad things. Bad things happen. He told me to read a lot. And he also told me you keep quitting your books because you don't understand the words that you're reading. Start looking words up. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. I got to go to the dictionary. We didn't have Google back then. I got to go to the dictionary and look a word up and take that time. And I always wanted to move fast and things. So I, I felt like that slowed me down. He said, but yeah, you're not finishing book. So look it up. And I would come up with a word to him and say, hey, what is, uh, I don't know, what does disseminate mean? And he'd be like, go look it up. And I'm like, dude, you're right here. You know, the, you, do you know what it means? And he's like, yeah, I know what it means. Well, just tell me. No, 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 go look it up. He was training me.